quickly summarizing what we have learnt. First, we saw that XT graphs prioritize the flow of time. They very clearly specify that time flows this way. And so motion is actually represented as a flow of time. And so that makes things a lot simpler and clearer. So you can say exactly how the body moved. So therefore, we are able to then use it to find the direction of motion. So if I look at this, I know that the body went up, stopped for some time, then went up and then came back. The second thing that we learned was if this line is flat, that means the body has not moved because as time is changing, x remains same. And so that means the body is at rest. We also realized that xt graph says much more than just the direction of motion because it tells us what is the position at every instant of time. Not only is it telling us where the object is at this instant, this instant, this instant and so on. It actually tells us where the object is at intermediate instants as well. So actually xt graph is a different way of talking about x as a function of time. So it gives you a lot of information. In fact, it gives you complete information about the motion. Then we saw that if you have this line being straight, whether it was straight like this or like this or like that, it means it's constant velocity because for equal intervals of time, you move equal displacements. So this displacement is the same if this time was the same. Then we also saw that we can use xt graphs to find average velocity. So suppose I take this curved piece and then I want to say what is the average velocity. And you look at this time and you look at this displacement. So you can find displacement by time and you can use that to find average velocity for any part of the motion. I could start here and end there, in which case this would be the time and that would be my displacement. We also saw that we can find speeds with this. So for example, if I'm saying I'm going from here to here, I can look at displacement and then say that this for this time I had this much displacement that would give me average velocity. But I can also look at this and say, well, actually I moved up, then I moved down. So I can find how much distance has been traveled and therefore I can also find average speeds for both curved as well as straight lines. And we also saw this average velocity is the same as the velocity for a straight line connecting these two. We also learned that slope of this graph is the instantaneous velocity. We also learned that if the slope was like this, the velocity is smaller and if the slope was like that, velocity is larger and this means a much larger velocity. In this video, we looked at xt graph.